But even given that we are the political opponents, what of the fact that at least 88 now, we're now here 98 or so, members of the MPP caucus have indicated publicly that keeping Ken Oforiata as finance minister is problematic. For good reason. They speak to matters of conflict of interest. They also speak to matters of the fact that both the domestic and global markets don't have a positive perception of him and his ability to address the challenges that we face. So this issue of let's keep him to present the budget and let's let him be the one to lead us through the IMF and let's let him get the appropriations bill passed is neither here nor there. Today, as we speak, and nobody is wishing for that, if he were to be gravely ill, can he perform any of these functions? So we can leave their politics to them, but it clearly shows the level of disenchantment about the general perception that Ken Oforiata has outlived his usefulness as far as the finance ministry and the management of Ghana's economy are concerned. So, and that is the point. But when we come to the issue of the budget, I still believe that we can't be certain as to who is going to present the budget. Why not? Well, you read the communique, interestingly signed by the majority chief whip. I would have thought that it should have been signed by the majority leader and the leader of the house. Whether or not what we are being told is what has been duly accepted and is going to be complied with by the quote-unquote, the rebel 88 or rebellious 98. We are yet to see. We have not heard their side of the story, is the point I'm trying to make. So the issue of who is going to present the budget is still fluid until perhaps we go there tomorrow to see whether it is going to be Colonel Foriata and, or whether it is going to be somebody else. And if it is him, would they stay or would they leave? as they are publicly threatened. So what I'm saying is that, yes, this communique may have come out, but we cannot confirm its effectiveness 